Hello little zookeepers, my name's Zoe and I'm a zookeeper. Today, some of my animals are going to be helping me in the zoo. Aardvarks and zebras, penguins and pigs, buffalo, beetles and geese. Come and join in with the animal crew at Zoe the Zookeeper Zoo. Hippos that splash, tigers that roar, Zoe's got something for you. So let's gather round and get set to explore at Zoe the Zookeeper Zoo. There are lots of jobs to do in the sea and I think some of my animals could help me with them. But I'm not sure who should do which job. Can you help me work it out? Let's see who we've got. There's Donald the duck. There's Polly the penguin. There's Larry the lamb. And there's Rosie the rabbit. Well, the first job is to get to the top of the apple tree to pick some of the apples that I'm too short to reach. Who do you think could do that? Hmm, I think Donald. He can fly to the top of the tree and help me. Did you think him as well? What's the next job? The next job is to dig a big hole in the elephant enclosure. It's been so warm recently, I think they need a new pool. Who do you think could dig a big hole for me? I think Rosie the rabbit could do that really quickly. Do you think so too? Well, I also need some of the grass cutting. Who do you think could go and cut some of the grass? I think Larry the lamb could do it. He's not very good with scissors, but lambs like to eat grass, so he could do that. Well, that just leaves Polly. Well, Polly, I have a very special job for you. I want you to keep an eye on these three just while I pop in and make a cup of tea quickly. Is that okay? Why not, Polly? She's worried that the others won't listen to her because she isn't me. Well, you don't need to worry about that, Polly. But there is someone in the Bible who felt exactly like you. They were put in charge, but they didn't think they should be. Well, last week in kids' church, we saw that the people of Israel they wanted a king, even though God was their real king. God listened to his people and told Samuel that he had chosen a man called Saul to be king. Now the Bible doesn't tell us very much about Saul, except that he was a tall and handsome man. Well, Samuel told Saul that God wanted him to be king, but Saul said God was wrong. He didn't think that he could be king because he wasn't important enough. Well, Samuel anointed Saul, which means he made him king. When Saul became king, God changed his heart and the Holy Spirit worked in him, which meant he was able to speak God's word to God's people. When the people saw that Saul was their king, lots of them were really happy because they finally had the human king that they wanted. But some of them were sad and said that Saul couldn't rule them and he couldn't save them. Polly didn't want to be in charge because she didn't think the other animals would listen to her and she didn't trust me. Well, Saul didn't want to be king because he didn't think he was important enough. But really, it was because he didn't trust God. Saul didn't trust that God could give him all he needed to be king, even though it was God's plan. But you see, when God commands his people to do something, he gives them all they need to be able to do it. Now, this isn't just true for Saul and the people in the Old Testament or even in the New Testament. It's true for us today as well. There are parts of our lives where we don't want to do what God says or find it hard to trust him. 
but God has given us all we need to be able to obey and trust him. Maybe you don't want to tell your friend about Jesus because you don't think you know enough or you don't think you can answer their questions. Or maybe you find something hard and you want to stop doing it, but you're trying to do that yourself when really you need to ask God to help. Well, none of us can trust and obey God perfectly, but someone did. Jesus trusted God and followed his commands, even though it meant that he died. Because of that, Jesus took the punishment from us that we get when we don't obey God, it meant that we could be friends with God again. And Jesus also shows us that we need to trust God, but we need to ask him for help in that. Just before Jesus died, he prayed that God would help him to do God's will because it was really hard for him. Well, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to ask God to help us to trust and obey him. So why don't you close your eyes and put your hands together and at the end you can do a big amen with me. Okay, let's go. Dear God, thank you that you give us all we need so we can do what you want. We're sorry for when we don't trust and listen to you. Help us to trust you and help us when we struggle to do what's right. Amen. Well, Polly, do you trust me now that you can be in charge of the animals for a little bit? Well, it's time for me to go and have a cup of tea and for you to look at the story more with your grown-ups. Bye!